Okay, we want to see in these slides if there's anything special about the relationship between the direction of the electric field and equipotential surfaces. So let's go back to the problem where we had a uniform electric field and we saw before that the equipotential surfaces are planes perpendicular to the electric field. So the electric field vectors are always perpendicular to the equipotential surfaces. Is this just specific to this problem or is it always the case? Well, if we go to the point charge case, the equipotential surfaces for point charge is, are spheres. And we know that the electric field is perpendicular to the surface of the sphere. It's radially going out, radially outward from the charge. So it's perpendicular also to the equipotential surface. So is this the case in general? Can we make a general argument that the electric field is always perpendicular to the equipotential surface? We can take here an arbitrary equipotential surface and A and B are two very close points on this surface. They both lie on the surface. So by definition, the potential at A is exactly the same as the potential at B because any point on this surface has the same potential. So that means that VB minus VA is zero because they both have the same value of potential exactly. Okay, now if you make a vector the dr that points from A to B, it's an infinitesimal vector. We know from before that the difference in potential between two points is always equal to minus the electric field at A dotted into the dr A to B. So we know this relation is, is correct. Now we just said that VB minus VA is zero. That means that minus E dotted into the dr vector is zero. So what can you conclude from this expression? We know that the vector dr is not zero. It's a vector pointing from A to B. So this is not zero, definitely. We know the electric field magnitude is not zero for, in general for a particular problem. We haven't mentioned here where the charge distribution in the problem is, but it's not important. For any kind of charge distribution, there are always equipotential surfaces. So the electric field in general, it's not zero. The magnitude is not zero at an arbitrary point. So what can we conclude then about the direction of the electric field vector? We conclude since the dot product is zero and the magnitude of E is not zero and the magnitude of dr is not zero, then cosine of the angle is the thing that's zero. And if cosine of the angle is zero, then the angle between the two vectors has to be 90 degrees. So we can conclude that the electric field vector at A has to be perpendicular to this vector. But there are so many vectors that can be perpendicular to this particular vector. So it doesn't really give us anything useful so far. So let's see how we can proceed to get a specific answer. Well, what if you take the dr vector not pointing from here to here, but pointing from here to here instead? We make a circle surrounding point A, and every point on the circle lies on the equipotential surface. So all points on this circle, they have potential the same value. So that means that, and they have the same value as the potential at A. So that means that if you use the same argument as we did before, the electric field at A should be also perpendicular to this vector dr. But, uh, what if you also take any other vector dr? If you take vector dr pointing from A to any point on this circle, since the potential at every point on the rim of the circle is the same, and it's the same as the potential at A, then the difference in potential is zero. That means the electric field has to be perpendicular to every single one of these vectors. That means that it has to be perpendicular to the surface at this point. Okay, so that means that the electric field vector either points perpendicular to the surface pointing this way, or it's perpendicular to the surface pointing downwards. We don't know which one yet because we don't know uh, what the, what what's going on in the neighboring regions. So what if you know that there's another equip equipotential surface with potential V2 somewhere on this side of this area and it's given that V1 is bigger than V2. Now can you, can you define which uh, vector the electric field would be? Would it be this one or this one? We know that the electric field goes from a region of high potential to low potential so now we can identify that the electric field vector has to be this one since the potential on this equipotential surface is bigger than this one. So the electric field vector is perpendicular to the surface and it points from the surface of high potential 
to the surface of low potential.